good afternoon everybody welcome to another video it's mid afternoon now I've come out just for a couple of hours just till it gets dark to stretch near home now it's not uh, where I normally fish on the Avon near home come a little bit further along cleared a bit of a <laughs> area right as you can see it's very overgrown here we've got sort of a, a little area between some trees there's trees on this bank trees on the far bank now I've not fished here for at least four years um, I used to fish here quite a lot uh, I used to catch carp in here barbel big chub in fact my chub PB came from here just over seven pound so uh, there used to be some lovely fishing here however the fishing went right off and I couldn't really work out why and I discovered that the uh, village is about I don't know 150 meters downstream had put in an otter halt and the, it's become occupied and as a result the fishing in here went absolutely atrocious so I stopped coming that's the reason I stopped coming now there's no carp around anymore or very very few certainly not worth targeting the same with the barbel it's not really particularly barbel stretch anyway um, but what I thought I'd do today is um, come down and do a little bit of waggler fishing now that in mind I've got my CR10, Cadence CR10, 14 foot match number two. My 506 Mark II Abu Garcia close face reel. I'm going to use a Drake Waggler on here, bodied Waggler. There's not too much flow, it's just a very slow walking pace running through here. From memory, it always used to be quite full of streamer weed in the middle of here, but obviously it's winter now, so in the middle of winter. Oh, he looks like it, I'm actually sweating. I've got all my thermals on and stuff, but it's uh, the weather's picked up and it's sunny as you can tell. And uh, it's, it's quite warm here. Um, the river's up, but not too much. There's some colour in it, but not too much. So we may do all right, but it may, we may have to wait till uh, it starts to get dark so we pick up any bigger fish. But hopefully we can fish, pick some fish. I've never waggler fished here before, ever. Now what I've done as well is bought with me one of my Advanta RBS specimen two-pound Tesco rods that are set up with a pike bung on. To, to float ledger now if we fancy that i may put that as a bit of a sleeper rod but uh, we'll just have to see really i haven't bought any baits with me <laughs> so we'll need to catch some bait but fresh bait's always the best but yeah i might put just a perhaps a, a half a roach out on a dead bait or something like that or perhaps a little skimmer or something if we catch just a little small section the nice tree behind me down here in the water another one to the other side so yeah we may put that out i may not who knows so yeah, um, fingers crossed we can have some fish, like I say, never done this down here before and not fished here for a very long time. But uh, things are starting to settle down a little bit after the otters have come. They've completely changed the place. I mean, uh, the, um, the, the the river has changed a lot since the otters came, but you know, things are starting to settle down. Then. Right, I think that's enough waffle, isn't it? Let's get on with it. <laughs> now, I don't have a great deal of an idea how deep it is in here. <laughs> so... From memory, and as I say, it was a very long time ago, something like, I guess, seven or eight foot, I would think. We'll start off about seven foot. And if we're, obviously, if we're dragging bottom, we'll shallow up. And if we're, uh, if we're not dragging bottom at all, we'll go a bit deeper. Right, we'll have to put a float on, wouldn't it? Right, I'm going to break the waggler. Now, bait-wise, kept it very simple. I've got some, um, some maggots with me and some worms, and that's it. I was going to bring some bread, but I didn't <laughs> in the end. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to mostly rely on maggots, I think. I've also got some ground bait with me. I've got some Census 3000 gross gardons. We'll... Uh, Use that fairly sparingly, I think. I've put a couple of balls in already. I'm just gonna at least feed some maggots. And uh, yeah, let's see how we get on. So it's, uh, it's nice to something a bit different. A bit of explore. Previously fished area. Oh, a bit deeper than eight foot there, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's 
dragging under there, so we'll uh, adjust that up. Well, I can't imagine you want to watch me messing about with this float, so I'll get this sorted and then we'll come back. So we'll try again, put a slightly bigger float on actually, just to make it much easier to get out to the distance, just into the middle of the river. Yeah, a couple of, perhaps three rod lengths, something like that. Just let that run through. Pushing very light, I've got a two pound bottom on with a size 20 hook, just fishing single mag at the moment. We'll just uh, feel our way in. So I fished here, as you'll remember, I fished here a few weeks ago, a week or so ago, well, a bit further down that way, and uh, struggled to get any bites. <laughs> so I'm not going to go too mad on the feed. Run under there. Great helicopter coming over, what's that bit? Chinook. This is the sort of place you could kick up a few surprises. So, it's part of the stretch that my neighbour owns the rights to. I think the odd other person fishes downstream, but uh, I don't think anyone fishes up this bit. Could be anything in here. <laughs> I have to find out when I call that chub. <laughs> Absolute beast. I've been doing a lot of pre baiting here, as I said, catching barbel and carp in here. They used to come down twice a week and bait up. I caught a couple of chub one evening, uh, six, and one was about four and a half. And about, oh, blimey. Six weeks later, something like that. A couple of months later. I was down here doing the same thing, just led her in across the other side. And uh, caught this thing in a half light, came to the top. And I thought it was a car, it was that deep bodied. Um, but then when it... It's it, When it, uh, I got it in the net, got the torch on it, I thought, blimey. This chub and it turned out to be the six pounder. <laughs> They've been absolutely troughing, it was so fast. No, it's anything like it. Ah, the chop got up now, it was supposed to be windy today. We'll give it an hour anyway, see what happens. See if we can get any bites. It'd be a good start. <laughs> Westerlies at the moment, which is why it's gone warm. And they just bang straight up here like a wind tunnel. But downwind, sorry, upstream breeze is not too bad. It slows the float up, which is good. Helps with the line to follow the float down. running there nicely. I say hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> he says, hopefully, can have a few bites, catch a few roach, be nice. Oh, that sun is very bright, it's getting lower. <laughs> the water temperature actually, I'm pretty sure it have gone up, it's got milder. I'm just pretty sure it has gone up. 24 degrees in my pocket. But it is in the river. 
can't believe the, uh, the fish are not going to be up for a feed today. The water like it is, the water's seven and a half. Well, it's even my goldfish were stirring today. <laughs> Mooching about looking for some food. I haven't said all that though, of course, you know, it's lovely sat here in this sun. <laughs> it is really warm. But, uh, it's not going to do the fish any good at all. <laughs> I can't get a bite. I managed to catch a twig at the bottom and as I was bringing it in, something struck at it. <laughs> so I think if we, uh, if, we get, if we could get a live bait, we might actually catch a predator. I don't know what it is. I didn't, it was, I didn't see it. But I just can't buy a bite at the moment. I've tried shallow, deep, in the edge, in the middle. Just can't buy a bite. Blimey. Well, finally, finally had a bite. It's taken a good hour, I would think. I'm not sure what this is. Feels a bit broomy, to be honest. Oh, I mean. Oh, now let's get a bite that's come off. Brilliant. Well, I did feel like a brain. <laughs> well, that's quite annoying. <laughs> Finally, after an hour, I get a bite and it comes off. I actually thought I'd got the bottom kind of where it keeps going down over there anyway, it must shallow up a bit, the tail has swim. It went down there and I was thinking, oh, the bottom, why didn't strike very hard? Stupidly. Well, hopefully if there's a bream there, there'll be a few more. They usually hang around on their own, do they bream? No roach at all, which I'm absolutely amazed at. Believe it. Not only no roach, I mean, I've not even had a bite. A roach bite. It's genuinely the first bite I've had at first. You know, I've had a maggot or anything. Nothing at all. Hey, we've had a bite, we've caught a fish. Finally. What is it? A roach. <laughs> we finally, finally, the fish. <laughs> Fantastic. <sighs> so, who knows what's prompted this, but I'm guessing. The fact that that sun is going down. Well, I took the opportunity, uh, unfortunately for the roach, to uh, to get the dead bait rod out. So I'll just put it under this tree next to me. Looks like there should be some some preds under there. I'll keep an eye on that. 
hopefully. Can have perhaps a focal aperture or is under. Hopefully we can have perhaps what's left of the day, maybe an hour, and catch a few fish. Possibly. <laughs> Be nice. And the second that sun started to dip, it started to get proper cold. <laughs> it's not even going down, it's only just... Uh, starting to lose its intensity a little bit and just go behind one of the trees and blimey yeah we're getting a few bites now all of a sudden I think just starting to get dark the roach have Switched on a little bit. Well, it's not to get dark, I say that the light level has gone down a little bit, put it that way. Just noticeable it, the, the sun has just gone behind a, a tree over there. Obviously like a, a winter skeleton of a tree. But, uh, you know, it's just lost a bit of intensity, it's just dropping. And I can certainly tell. The, the, the temperature's dropped. Obviously, not affected the water temperature, but all of a sudden, literally, all, all day it's been like there's been no fish here, apart from that that, uh, that bream. It's taken a good sort of an hour and a half <laughs> to get things going. As I say, I don't think it's me. I think it's. I don't think anything I've done. I think it's we uh, the fish have just switched on. Can just be the time of day, can't it? Sometimes, especially you know, when it's sunny like this. There we go. Uh, we're here now, certainly. I might pull that pipe to him, but... Because it may not, I guess, be the fact that they've, uh, they've just switched on. It may be that they weren't here. <laughs> they just turned up, perhaps. Who knows? Size fish. <laughs> Catch it to be fair. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Don't tell your friends. <laughs> Getting a bite now every perhaps second run through, something like that, third run through. Not every time, but most. About 50% of the time, I'd say, probably. They're all right in front of me as well. Jesus, a bit of old scaffold pole to put my rod on. Well, I've checked it, it's not sharp. It's been there a very, very long time. It's properly weathered in. <laughs> not too sharp. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it. There's some kind of old staging or something under all these masses of reeds at my feet. All the planks have gone off it, but there's like a scaffold in 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 the mud and sort of cross pieces and stuff. I actually put a pallet on it uh, about five or six years ago. It's actually still there, but it's totally rotten, of course. <laughs> Stood on it earlier and it 
it broke. But it's uh, it stayed attached, which is good. But as I say, I haven't been down for a very long time. Purely because uh, it used to come out down here, like I said, chasing, you know, bigger, bigger species of carp, really. But uh, barbel as well, it used to be barbel down here. It's probably still the odd one and the odd carp, but certainly nothing worth targeting. He's doing a very, very great deal of blanking. Well, we're catching a few now, which is great. What's this? Feels a bit funny. Funny old fight. Don't know. Come on, before that pike gets you. Oh, this is some nice ones. Certainly can't complain about that. <laughs> In the evening sun. Well, late afternoon sun. Double maggot seems to be doing the business as well. I'm going to move that to point where I've not done anything now. I'm going to give it, move it over this side. Oh, well, probably gone cold. <laughs> Blimey. I do a, I have to go double hat. Cap for the sun. And the, uh, woolly, woolly up my ears. <laughs> Never mind, at least we're catching a few. It's took, like I say, probably an hour to get a bite off that bream, and then it dropped off. It probably took another half an hour actually get these roach moving. But, to be honest, like I said, I don't think I can take credit for it anyway. I think it's just the time of day. Just the time of day, it's done it. Home day plus the weather. But it's a bit of an explore, as I said, and uh, never done this before. At least we know that there's some roach here. Clearly. Oh, look away, look back, your float's not there anymore. <laughs> and you think, am I missing something? And then it pops back up. <laughs> Pay attention. finding um, a lot more bites on double maggot than I am on single which I'm a bit surprised about this time of year the trouble is the hookup rate's not so great on the double maggot and small hook I think if I put a bigger hook on I'm going to get less bites as well so it's a good balancing act really ball of grain baiting. Just a tiny little tiny little ball just to cloud up in the water really. Very strange bites as well. Very slow and flow just slowly. So it's exactly like as if you caught the bottom. But I've been fishing here for an hour and a half and not catching the bottom and haven't changed the depth. And now all of a sudden it's like I'm catching the bottom. So it clearly bites. Unless there are just so many fish down there now that the, the line is just touching against the side of a fish and pull in a float under. I don't think they're grabbing the shot because I'm not, I'm not feeding hemp or anything. I've got any with me. 
see it's a definite bite and I missed that as well. Oh, there we go. A bit better. I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> Come on, before Mr. Pikey gets you. Well, certainly not complaining. I thought I'm getting a few bites anyway. <laughs> Wonderful. The uh, predator rod's doing absolutely nothing. Bizarre. But you never know. Oh. A few wrap ups in this line, but I think it's just me doing a terrible job of feathering it. Just trying to feather the line just before it hits the water, but I keep. Stopping it rather than feathering it. Such a fine line. A 3.2 pound uh, Drennan float fish line. Decided to have a change when, it, when the water started to get cold. I've been using. Uh, Chameleon all last summer and found it fantastic. Well, what I found as soon as the water temperature started to get down a bit, sort of towards 10 degrees and, and below, you know, sort of 12, 10 degrees, I found it almost went a bit sticky and it, and it wouldn't feed off the spool cleanly. It kept snagging and catching. I thought perhaps it was bedded in, re spooled, still the same. It just seemed to be that when it got cold, It almost got a bit tacky and like I say just having the right game so um, I ditched that and uh, tried a few different ones which I wasn't particularly happy with settled recently on this drenning float fish and then you know it does what it says on the tin doesn't it it's a uh, line for float fish <laughs> got it on my trotting gear and my uh, my waggler gear now oh pay attention I don't know how I'm missing half these bites. They seem to be on red maggots as well. <gasps> how? How am I missing these bites? <laughs> I've gone to single maggot and I am getting bites. Good for Earlier on I was getting more bites on double maggot and hooking up less. Now I'm getting just as many bites on single maggot and I'm still hooking up less. <laughs> Damn, what's going on? But, uh, we haven't got too much longer I don't think. Probably, well certainly half an hour tops, probably more like 20 minutes. Well, we can't see anymore. It's tricky to see at the moment. <laughs> That's have something a little bit bigger. Well, pred. That's have a zander. I haven't caught a zander at the end of this season yet. <laughs> I haven't really been fishing for them much. One or two sessions. It's raining, it's fishing for dark. I've just not, not been doing it. Oh, this is a bit bigger. That's good. Caught it a bit further down where I had that bream earlier. What felt like a bream anyway. Trudging off upstream. Oh, oh, this is. 
not really doing a lot. Doesn't feel like that bream did earlier. But it may well be one. Certainly not tearing off anywhere. Oh, strike it. Yeah, nice one, huh? Oh wow, that's a lovely strike peak. Wow. Well, this box uh, certainly starts to turn up trumps. Well, how's about that? Fantastic. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. Sessions uh, turning out all right in the end. Fantastic stuff. You love a big striping by the looks of the belly. This is a female, so we'll, we'll get her unhooked, get her back. Well, wonderful stuff. It's, uh, made it worth it. Got some, got some roach and then that, that little cracking perch. Lovely job. Who knows? We might have some more surprises yet. Much further downstream though, we have any roach. Let it run through. Might be worth a, worth a beaver session here in the uh, coming weeks. But there's some uh, some nice chub in here. Always used to be some nice chub in here. The chub seem to be. Uh, much less affected by the otters, presence of otters than, uh, than lots of fish, don't they? Yeah, chips seem to do all right, and there's otters about. Certainly a lot to uh, the barb will do, <laughs> which you just seem to have no fear of otters at all. Chub are quite uh, fearful fish, aren't they? I think they, uh, scarper a bit quicker than the barb. don't seem to be the most intelligent fish in the world. That's why they go first, I think, and the carp went out of here, because obviously they're much slower than everything else. <laughs> Big and slow, easy to catch. If you're an otter. Straight under. <laughs> Glad I had a session like this here. It's nice. It so, uh, means when I do come back, I'm not going to be thinking to myself, mm, is this worth it? Is there any point? <laughs> so, I know there's a point. The water has warmed up a lot in the last few days. Well, last week, week and a half, I say, this, last, last time I came down here, I was fishing a bit further upstream, a few hundred metres, and uh, it's four degrees, just over four degrees, it's just over seven today, so certainly a uh, lack of frost for that couple of nights and slightly warmer days is doing the trick. So they're going to warm the water up and all the fish will be thinking about spawning then, wouldn't they? Still catching, no, it's only has gone down now. It's lovely evening here actually. Still catching, as I have to see if I spin you around, you'll see. Sunset over there, the trees. Just, just a nice evening now. It's going a bit cold, and as I said, I'm probably in about 10 minutes. I'm not going to be able to see this float anymore. 
I just had a phone call requesting that I pick up daughter number one so <laughs> and she'll be ready in about 20 minutes so that's timed just about perfectly <laughs> I've been tearing about these roach come on that pipe's going to get you bit better is that why he's uh oh, i think it's a chublet i think it is oh, well, i was gonna say well it is a chublet oh banging away at the well <clears throat> thought there might be a few chub in here <laughs> how's about that one <laughs> fab always used to be like I say reasonably good for chub in here I bet uh, that would do all right come ledger in here in dark into dark right we'll give it five minutes and then we'll make a move I think we'll just have five minutes just running this, uh, this float around just see if we can winkle out a pike or a zander or something there we go <laughs> it's gone already <laughs> it didn't take long did it <laughs> blimey I've got circle hook on here so it's not going to be an issue with deep hooking anything yeah certainly on but I don't know quite what it is it's more pike I'd imagine but let's uh, find out well it doesn't feel so small <laughs> get under my feet. I think it is a small pike. I think that one that's been bothering us all day. <laughs> Perhaps it's a nice sander then for a minute. <laughs> Running this round in circles anyway. I think it is that one that's been running us around all, all day. Looks about the right size. <laughs> Perhaps I did him a bit of a disservice. He's a bit bigger than a pound. <laughs> right, in breath. Let him get his breath back, and we'll uh, we'll have a quick look at him before we go. <laughs> well, there he is. <laughs> Not a big one. But very welcome nonetheless as i said i use circle hooks and you see well you can see it's there right at the corner of his mouth which is exactly where it should be not even needing any forceps to get it out but yeah I'll, um, I'll stick a link up there where i show you how i tie my traces up for, for my predator fishing but yeah there he is <laughs> cheeky little fella wonderful stuff right let's get you back Yeah, I use circle hooks for all my predator fishing. I don't, uh, I don't use snap tackle at all. I do like the the fact that they're very easy to get out, and that, that chance of deep hooking is, is very, very minimal. And um, if you do, it's just one hook to get out, and uh, if you deep barb, it's very, very easy, very easy. But as you see, it's, what what should happen is that that the no matter how deep the fish takes the bait and when you wind rather than strike you wind the hook out of the mouth and it catches as it comes around the corner and comes out so you, you, as you saw exactly what happened well he's certainly ready to go bothering some more roach off you go fella there he goes <laughs> off for a sulk 
Grab. Right, it's time to go home. <laughs> well, what turned out to be very difficult start to the session, but you know, clear skies and sunshine. Uh, finished off great. I mean, nothing that's going to break any records or anything, but very, very enjoyable session. Caught some roach, caught that lovely, caught that lovely perch, and uh, <laughs> that little chub, and <laughs> we had that pike at the end. So I, that was really enjoyable. I really enjoyed that. Just for a couple of hours down here, and after the first hour, I was very, very close. I mean, literally, I was, I was looking at our maggots, thinking they've got some casters in there, a bit manky. I very nearly went home and riddled my maggots, to be honest. <laughs> so glad I didn't. And the roach just started to switch on as soon as that sun started to go down. It's all kicked off. But yeah, definitely worth a session down here into dark as well. And uh, perhaps get down here and hope we could even catch uh, catch some chub on the on the uh, on the maggot mag and wag the maggot the maggots and uh, waggler and maggot or or even get down here and do some bread fishing. That may be another option as well. But that's for another time. For now, thank you very much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed that. Tight lines. Enjoy your own angling. Many thanks to the channel patrons for your wonderful support. And I'll see you all again very soon.